We are hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Yesterday we heard Thus, because he is completely absorbed in thought of me, such Bhakti Yogi, Kapil Bhagavan is saying to Devahuti, the devotee does not desire even the highest benediction obtainable in the upper planetary systems, including Satyaloka. He does not desire the eight material perfections obtained from mystic yoga, nor does he desire to be elevated to the kingdom of God. Yet, even without desiring them, the devotee enjoys, even in this life, all the offered benedictions. One second. Yes, in the Baikun, this is sometimes uh, wondered why. So here, in the Baikunta planets, everything is eternally peaceful, yet a pure devotee does not even aspire to be promoted there, because his only desire is to serve Krishna. Like Mahaprabhu said, Mama Janmani Janmani Shwari, even if I have to take birth, after birth, no problem. That is no problem for me. My only desire is that I may serve you wherever I am. So then further, but still he gets that advantage. He enjoys all the facilities of the material and spiritual worlds, even during the present lifespan. Jivan Mukta, devotee, one who is fully engaged in the service of Krishna, though remaining in this world, he is not in this world. He is always transcendental to this world and he is tasting transcendental bliss because he is seeing everything as related to Krishna and using everything for his service. So he knows whether I am here or there or in this body or that, that doesn't matter. Only I want to serve Krishna. And we have example when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu offered Sridhar Pandit in Mayapur, he was a very poor person. I externally seeing like broken house, no money, all this. And Mahaprabhu offered him, you take everything, what you like. He said, no, I don't want anything. And Mahaprabhu said, then take yoga CDs. He said, no, I don't want. Only I want your service. Also, Dhruva said same thing. And Vritrasur, I don't want anything. Na Joga Siddhim, na Sarvagomam, na Punarja, nothing. Liberation, not nothing. Only I want your service. Because they already got the taste of that. And they know that is the highest thing and only natural thing. Generally, some like beginner devotee, they, they think, Oh, let me go to Goloka, that I want. I want to go to Goloka. But why they want to go? Because they think there I will enjoy with Krishna. I will peacefully enjoy uh, going around and uh, this, because that is our conception. But that is not the thing. Goloka means they are all serving Krishna. They are not going there to enjoy. That is completely only service of Krishna. Everyone is serving. And one who is pure devotee, he only wants to serve Krishna how he wants, whether in this world or anywhere. Nakarhichin mat parakshantarupe nankshyanti no me nimisholedhi heti yesham aham priya atma sutascha Saka Guru Suhrido Devam Ishtam. The Lord continued, My dear mother, devotees who receive such transcendental opulences are never bereft of them. Neither weapons nor the change of time can destroy such opulence. 
any other opulence is destroyed with weapons of another more powerful king or country or something, it will be destroyed or else time will destroy everything. But these opulence are transcendental, far beyond time. Because the, devotee, because the devotees accept me as their friend, their relative, their son, preceptor, benefactor and supreme deity, they cannot be deprived of their possessions at any time. So here all rasas are mentioned. Sakya, Guru, Sukhrido, Friend, Devam, Ishtam, Priya, different kinds of. Yes, from this verse you can learn that we can love the Supreme Personality of Godhead as our dearest their most object as a friend, as a son, as a preceptor or as a well-wisher. And there will be no cheating and no end to such love. We shall eternally enjoy the relationship with the Supreme Lord in different aspects. The conclusion is that the time influence cannot act upon devotees who have accepted the Supreme Personality of Godhead as everything. Imam lokam tateivamum atmanam ubhayainam atmanam anu ye cheha ye raya pashavo griha Visrijya sarvan anyamscha mam evam vishvato mukham bhajantya nanyaya bhaktya tan mrityor ati paraye. Thus, the devotee who worships me, the all pervading Lord of the universe, in unflinching devotional service, gives up all aspirations to be promoted to heavenly planets or to become happy in this world with wealth, children, cattle, home or anything in relationship with the body. I take him to the other side of birth and death. Ananyaya Bhaktiya, that is unflinching devotion service. Nanyatra Mad Bhagavata Pradhana Purusheshwarat Atmanak Sarva Bhutanam Bhayam Tivram Nivartate. See, the terrible fear of birth and death can never be forsaken by anyone who resorts to any shelter other than myself. For I am the Almighty Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the original source of all creation and also the Supreme Soul of all souls. Our, it means, Gurudev told me, you should think of Krishna because he will rescue us, isn't he? When you know this, that only he can rescue you, he is the only shelter. When, when you know this, then you can be attentive to him. Otherwise, you will have your attention to so many places and your strength and all this. But real devotee, he has only one shelter and because he is in that shelter, he really has no fear, like Pralad Maharaj. Krishna is the only maintainer, Krishna is the only protector. 
and Krishna is omnipotent. So really he can protect. No one else can. Even ourselves, we cannot protect ourselves. That is also we will hear now during Kartik Brata, Gajendra. He said, I'm not taking shelter of anyone, including demigods. I only take shelter of Parameshwar, Supreme Ishwar, Supreme Lord. And he was rescued. There also it is in Bhagavatam. We learn Kentu Bhayam Diti Abhinesha Tasyat. Isha Tapetase Pare Smriti. That verse. Fear comes when one is deviated from Krishna. When one turns away from Krishna, immediately fear comes. And if one wants to be rescued, he must have one point of devotion to him under the uh, taking shelter of bona fide guru. Then only it is possible to be turned towards Krishna. And then there is no more fear and anxiety, this thing. Like Pralata, Horinas Thakur, Ambarish Maharaj, Dhruva also. But if someone is not on that level of surrender, then he should not imitate. Our Guru Dev told, Dhruva was protected in forest from lion, tiger, all this. But if we go, it will not be like that. Because we are not accepting the shelter of Krishna. So we should not try to imitate externally the devote like Dhruva. No, I will go to forest, I will challenge. It will not work. Also one time in Chandigarh, one devotee, she was explaining about her preaching in South Africa and telling how people they used to uh, sometimes beat her or do some harmful, but she was explaining in such a mood, a little proud mood. I was preaching, in the, I was hearing also. So then Gurudev was hearing then he told, we cannot imitate Pralat Maharaj. We are not Pralat Maharaj. We cannot imitate him. Then it was clear everything. So we should not be like theoretical based on some theory or false ego, like bold, like anything, like a devotee, a Krishna will protect on this and behave in such way, then we may get some lesson. But those who really are such devotees, like Prahlad Maharaj, he never boasted, I'm a great devotee, I'm fearless, I, I can do whatever I like. No, when he was in school, Sanda and Tamarka, they were teaching wrong things, politics. Still, he would not boast, oh, you are wrong, this is uh, totally uh, false. He was not boasting with false pride. He remained silent only when he was asked, then he told. And to keep society in peace. So, boldness out of false ego will be reactionary. But those who are real devotees, pure devotees, and they are ordered to preach because they are fully surrendered, then they will be bold, but not out of false ego, like Sai Maharaj. They are rascals, fools, or like Nityananda Prabhu also was telling, that is not out of false ego. Obiman Shunya Nitai Nagare Berai. Mahapru, and, uh, Nityananda Prabhu was going everywhere, chanting loudly and requesting to chant. 
but obiman shunya without any false ego. Sai Maharaj also no false ego. But if someone with false ego is too much bold, then opposition will also come. And we, we can be harmed. So that lady was explaining that like I was praying and they were harming me and like in this fighting spirit and proud spirit. So Guru said we are not Pralat. Madbhayat Vati Vato Yam Surya Stapati Madbhayat Varshatindro Dahatyagnir Mrityus Charati Madbhayat. You see again. It is because of my supremacy that the wind blows. Out of fear of me, the sun shines. Out of fear of me. And the Lord of the clouds, Indra, sends forth showers out of fear of me. Fire burns out of fear of me. And death goes about taking its toll payment out of fear of me. So all this is working because they are uh, dependent. On, they are all dependent on Krishna. It's all his will. So one who will take shelter of Krishna, no one can do anything to him. But that surrender should be real. And there are different degrees of surrender. Up to that point we can get the result. But one who is unconditionally surrendered, he has totally no fear and he has totally all protection. But we should not try to challenge out of false ego and saying Krishna will protect me because I am a devotee. If that is out of boasting, out of false ego, it will be wrong. And you will get that lesson by the arrangement of Krishna. He will have to uh, ground you, or I don't know how this is in English, he will have to uh, put you to right uh, position, to realize your own actual position. Jnana Vairagya Yuktena Bhakti Yogena Yogina Kshemaya Padamula Me Pravishanti Akuto Bhayam The yogis equipped with transcendental knowledge and renunciation and engaged in devotional service for their eternal benefit, take shelter of my lotus feet. And since I am the Lord, they are thus eligible to enter into the kingdom of Godhead without fear. Akutobhaim, there is no fear there. By Kunta. Our Gurudev also told, if someone takes unconditional shelter of Krishna here in this world, though he may not be in Vaikuntha, and even he may not directly see Supreme Lord, but he is fully surrendered to him and he is going on chanting with relation, with firm faith. Even he in this world has no any fear and no any difficulty and nothing, only transcendental bliss. <clears throat> Etavan eva lokesmin pungsham nishreya sodaya tivrena bhakti yogena mano mai arpitam stiram. Therefore, persons whose minds are fixed on the Lord engage in the intensive practice of devotional service. That is the only means for attainment of the final perfection of life. If our mind is fixed on the object of worship, Krishna, that is possible after Anartha Nivriti, that is Nishta stage, after Anartha Nivriti, then he can do actually intense service. What is that intense service? Kirtanya Sadakuri means whole time engagement, 
for the service of Krishna. From the standpoint of conditioned souls and those sadhakas with anarthas, we are unable to do service of Krishna like they can do. Really, they can do 24 hours a day. So that is very intense from our standpoint. For them, it is natural, but it is very intense in the sense it is continuous all the time. And you have some other schools, like they have enlightenment intensives programs, or they have regression intensives different school they, they have intensive some for some period intensive practice for us intensive means kartik brata or purushottam brata that is more intense devotional practice we have to accept for that one month period, uh, then that will help us progress. But those who have already reached the stage beyond an art and everything, for them, whole time they are doing intensive. Like one time we were for Kartik. And before going, then Gurdjieff was asking me about the programs, how they are going on. Already before he was asking me previous years, and I said yes, daily and this. Then that year, I told Gurdjieff, we are having two times. Then Gurdjieff said, that is okay to have two times function. That is okay. But you have to always remember Krishna. Then he said like this, now for Kartik, we are to always remember Krishna. So many lilas and teaching uh, always. So that was another stage, not only programs, but always. And he said, you have to think, I belong to Krishna, everyone belongs to Krishna, and uh, everything belongs to Krishna. When you are in that relationship, then you you can and you you always remember Krishna. Then he said, forgetting Krishna is a mistake. But how much we are uh, even when doing devotional service, I am inattentive. What to speak of other times? But Gurudev at that time said. For those who are real devotees established in real self, forgetting Krishna is a mistake. They never do, they never waste time for anything else other than the service of Krishna. Of course, that stage also we are we cannot imitate. We have to gradually come to that platform. We cannot do like Harina Stakura did. Now, if we try to imitate, we will realize it is not possible for us. But first one has to come to this platform of intense budget, means always. Then, uh, therefore, persons whose minds are fixed on the Lord, that is possible only after an art and everything, engage in the intensive practice of devotional service. That is the only means for attainment of the final perfection of life. Like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, we are hearing during Kartik, Jerupe loyale nam prem upajoy, tahar lakshan shlok shuna saruparamarai. Uttam khaya apanake manetri nadhom, duvi prakarek sahiznata kore vrika sam. Vrika jeno kati leho kichu nabulai, shukaya maile kare pani namagoy. Jai jai magoy te dei ta, jai jai magoy te, they are upon the horn. Gharma vrishti sohe aner kore rokon. Uttam hoya vaishnav hobini reviman jive saman divejani krishna dishtan. E mata hoya krishna dead. If one will take the name in this way, with all these four qualities, 
Trinada Pisonicena, more Hamlin than a girl, but more tolerant than three, giving respect to all, without false ego, no desire for respect. That is intense practice from that level it starts. And Mahaprabhu said, when one will do in this way, then he can get prema, otherwise not. Only by that practice. So here also, that is the only means, uh, intense practice, the only means of attainment, final perfection of life. Final perfection is Krishna prema. But we cannot imitate prema. Also, we cannot imitate nishta stage. We have to do regulated devotional service as prescribed by Gurudev to gradually come beyond anarthas. Next chapter. Twenty-six. Fundamental principles of material nature. Shri Bhagavan Uvach Atha te sampravakshami Tatvanam lakshanam pritak Yat viditva vimucheta Purushah prakriter gunai The personality of Godhead Kapila continued My dear mother, now I shall describe unto you the different categories of the absolute truth, knowing which any person can be released from the influence of the modes of material nature. Gyanam nishreya sarthaya purushasyatma darshanam yat ahur varne tat te Hridaya Granti Bhedanam. Hmm. Knowledge is the ultimate perfection of self-realization. I shall explain that knowledge unto you by which the knots of attachment to the material world are cut. Hridaya Granti, that is knots. Bhedanam. Separate means cut. Anadir Atma Purusho Nirgunah Prakriteh Para Pratyak Dhamma Soyam Jyotir Vishwam Yena Saman Vitam. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is the Supreme Soul. And he has no beginning, another. He is transcendental to the material modes of nature, nirguna prakritih para, beyond prakriti, nirguna. And beyond the existence of this material world, he is perceivable everywhere because he is self-effulgent. And by his self-effulgent luster, the entire creation is maintained. He is perceivable everywhere by his devotees only. Like atheists, they cannot see God anywhere. But devotees, they can see God is everywhere. Depends on our vision capacity. Devotees, they can see. so. Nirguna prakritech parah. Nirguna means not this material gunas, not as Mayavadis say, uh, beyond three gunas is nirguna, it means no qualities, just opposite of these three gunas, so he has no forum, no nothing. That is not correct. Not material form, not material qualities, but spiritual qualities, spiritual form. That Brahma Jyoti is only one aspect of transcendental truth, not complete. And also, they are not realizing it fully, because one can fully realize Brahman only when seeing 
it in relation to Krishna because it is Jyoti coming from him. Without knowing this fact, you, you are not completely knowing even Brahma Jyoti. He is self-effulgent and by his self-effulgent luster, that is Swayam Jyotir. Vishwam Yena Samanvitam, he is uh, entire creation is maintained. Sa esha prakritim sukshmam devim gunama im vibuh yadri chayaivo pagatam abhya padyata lilaya as his pastime that Supreme Personality of Godhead, the greatest of the great, accepted the subtle material energy, which is invested with three material modes of nature, and which is related with Vishnu. That is his energy. He is making creation. Now, Gunair vichitra srijati sarupa prakritim praja vilokya mumuhe sadya sa iha jnana guhaya. Divided into varieties by her threefold modes, material nature creates the forms of the living entities. And the living entities, seeing this, are illusioned by the knowledge covering feature of the illusory energy. Knowledge covering feature of the illusory energy. We are not seeing things as they are. Evam parabhi dhyanena kartri tvam prakritech puman Karma su kriya maneshu gunair atmani manyate. Because of his forgetfulness, the transcendental living entity accepts the influence of material nature as his field of activities and thus actuated, he wrongly applies the activities to himself. He wrongly applies the activities to himself. Yes. The forgetful living entity can be compared to a man who is under the influence of disease and has become mad, or to a man haunted by ghosts who acts without control and yet thinks himself to be in control. We are fully under control of Maya and we think we are controlling everything, but we are slaves. That was meant. Or we think I am doing this, which is actually done by material energy. That is full ego. Tat asya samsritir bandah para tantriam chatat kritam bhavat yakar tur ishasya Sakshino nirvritatmana. Material consciousness is the cause of one's conditional life, in which conditions are enforced upon the living entity by the material energy. Although the spirit soul does not do anything, no, no, no material activity, and is transcendental to such activities, he is thus affected by conditional life. We hear that without jiva nothing can move, but jiva cannot move without paramatma. But here it is meant jiva does not do anything, means jiva is not this instrumental body that is done by the body. 
like one person is in uh, excavator and he's driving that excavator and is pulling out the earth and putting there. So if he thinks I'm doing this as that machine, I'm that machine, that is wrong. But it does also not mean that the driver is not doing anything. What material energy is doing, is doing her part. What Jiva is doing is her part. But one should not mistake one for another or misidentify. That is uh, wrong. So spirit soul does not do anything of that thing. But spirit soul acts. If spirit soul would not act, then this material body also cannot do anything. And it is there in Vedanta Sutra. If Jiva would, would not be agent of action, Kartri, Kartritva, if, if it is not in relation to Jiva, Kartritva means agency or doership. If Jiva would not have that power, then all scriptural injunctions would be meaningless. Who would follow that? If everything is automatically done, to whom these instructions are given? This is good, this is bad, Brahmin should not drink alcohol. For whom this is meant? If Jiva can do no action, no choice is there. And if you do this type of yagya, you will go to Svarga. If you do this action, you will get this. If you will do devotion, you will go to Supreme Lord. For whom this is meant, if Jiva had no agency at all to worship. But one has to understand there are five factors in action. One is that Triguna, a body, and uh, one is Jiva, one is Paramatma, Deva, and one more is there five factors. So if one thinks I'm the only factor, that is wrong. If one thinks I am I am nothing, I have no responsibility, no nothing, that is also wrong. You have to know what is material energy, what is Jiva, what is Paramatma, and what is, who is doing what. When we are averse to Krishna, then we are under the influence of Maya and we are like her slave, uh, doing what she dictates. Karjo karana kartritve karanam prakritim viduh boktritve sukha dukhanam Purusham Prakritech Param. The cause of the conditioned soul's material body and senses, and the senses presiding deities, the demigods, is the material nature. This is understood by learned men. The feelings of happiness and distress of the soul, who is transcendental by nature, are caused by the spirit soul himself. This is also like in Gita, Krishna says, our Parangurdev used to speak on Radhashtami day, giving only illustration. Like in this world, this material body is there and is doing all actions under the direction of Purusha, means soul, and for his sake, that enjoyment will be felt by soul. Here, happiness and distress will be felt by soul, not by the body, but body, by body, by that Shakti, he is serving himself. Like that, Radharani Shakti of Krishna, non different from him. So through his potency, he is serving himself. Like we are engaging one hand to another, like doing like this, and I'm feeling the happiness. One is Purusha, one is Prakriti. 
in Joeris Purusha. He is having Sukha Dukkha and he is transcendental. But this Shakti is doing, and there is cause and effect in Shakti, like we will hear in Gajendra Moksha. You are everything. You are cause and effect of this material nature. At the same time, you are beyond this. Deva Hutir Uvach Prakritech Purusha Syapi Lakshanam Purushotama Bruhi Karanaya Rasya Sat Asat Cha Yat Atmakam. Deva Huti said, O oh, Supreme Personality of Godhead, kindly explain the characteristics of the Supreme Person and his energies. For both of these are the causes of this manifest and unmanifest creation. Shri Bhagavan Uvach. Iyat tat trigunam avyaktam nityam sat asat atmakam pradhanam prakritim prahur avishesham visheshavat. The Supreme Personality of God had said, the unmanifested eternal combination of the three modes is the cause of the manifest state and is called pradhan. It is called prakriti when in the manifested stage of existence. Unmanifest is cause. Cause of manifested. That is sata sat. But both are energy of Krishna, of Purusha, Bhagavan. Panchabih, Panchabir, Brahma. Chaturbir dashabhistata eta chaturving shatikam ganam pradhanikam vidu. The aggregate elements, namely the five gross elements, the five subtle elements, the four internal senses, the five senses for gathering knowledge, and the five outward organs of action are known as the pradhan. Five elements, earth, water, fire, air, sky. Five subtle elements are this uh, touch, sound. Four internal senses are uh, mind, intelligence, for sigo and chitta. Five, five karmendriya, they are outward organs of action, hands, legs, and five gyanendriya, uh, knowledge gathering senses, eye, air, this. They are all, this is all pradhan, unmanifest material energy all together. Mahabhutani Pancheva Bhur ah, now it is coming. Bhur Apognir Maru Nabha Tan Matrani Chatavanti Gandadini Matani Me. Yes. There are five gross elements, namely earth, water, fire, air and ether. There are also five subtle elements, smell, taste, color, touch and sound. Here, Sai Maharaj included all in translation. It, in Sanskrit, it is only Ganda Adi, Ganda Adi, beginning with smell. Hmm. Indriyani, 
दास श्रोत्र वाक द्रिक रासन नासिका वाक करो चरणो मेद्रम पायुर दाशम उच्चते the senses for acquiring knowledge and the organs for action number 10 namely the now first are this acquire uh, knowledge acquiring is the auditory sense the sense of taste the tactile senses the sense of sight the sense of smell the active organ for speaking the active organs for working and those for traveling generating and evacuating first are acquiring knowledge acquiring and then the last five are organs for action together 10 मानो बुद्धिर अहंकारश चित्तम इत अंतरात्मकम चतुर धा लक्ष्यते भेदो वृत्ति लक्षण रूपया। The internal subtle senses are experienced as having four aspects, in the shape of mind, that is man, intelligence, buddhi, ego, अहंकार, and contaminated consciousness, चित्ता. distinctions between them can be made only by different functions since they represent different characteristics but we have to clear our chitta cheto darpana marjanam then you can see properly yes when pure consciousness is polluted by material contamination and when identification with the body becomes prominent one is said to be situated under false ego consciousness is the function of the soul and therefore behind consciousness there is soul consciousness polluted by material contamination is called ahankar our gurudev told them in in english there is no word for chitta so we say mind because there is no word for mind we say mind and for chitta we also say mind and also some uh, also sometimes for souls consciousness we also say mind because there are not so many words but gurudev told difference between mind and chitta is chitta is storehouse of thoughts and mind is directly thinking those thoughts are there dying but that is storehouse in that storehouse we have to uh, clear all those material conceptions antakarana by harinam and imbibe transcendental thoughts etavan eva sankhyato brahmana sa gunasya ha sanivesho maya prokto ya kala pancha vinshaka all these are considered the qualified brahman the mixing element which is known as time is counted as the 25th element this were 24 and time is 25th these are all qualified brahman you will find also in uh, upanishads that brahman has all material energy everything in in uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's school, we say Achintya Beda Beda. Everything is one, Supreme Lord. Because Shakti is not different from Him, Shakti Man. So in that sense, that Shakti is also Brahman. That is like in Upanishads also. So one is qualified Brahman, another is Nirguna 
Brandon. Like in Gajendra Moksha also he said, you are everything. You are this world. But at the same time you are beyond. So this is one like Brahman, you can say another Brahman, but you have to understand properly what is meant. It is not like Mayavadis, they say, one is Nirguna Brahman, another is Saguna Brahman. Like Nirguna Brahman is liberated Brahman and Saguna Brahman is conditioned Brahman by Gunas. That is not what is meant in Upanishads. It is meant Brahman as supreme transcendental person and Brahman as his potency, Shakti. Yes, here he is there. Nirguna Brahman, Saguna Brahman. Saguna Brahman is 25 elements. This all material. But not as Mayavadis explain, Nirguna and Saguna. That is wrong interpretation. Only one more verse I will read because it is very important. Prabhavam Purusha, Purusham Prahu Kalam Ekeyato Bhayam Ahankara Vimudhasya Kartu Prakritim Iyusha. The influence of the Supreme Personality of Godhead is felt in the time factor, which causes fear of death due to the false ego of the deluded soul who has contacted material nature. So that is the so cause or source, source of fear. And no amount of bodyguards or uh, missiles for protection and uh, doctors can uh, free you from fear. No. Fear is due to Jiva contacting matter, identifying, immediately fear comes. Fear of death, fear of suffering, fear of all this is there. Only Jiva, who is out of this misconception, she has no fear. Otherwise, everyone has fear. And by any amount of material protection, that cannot be removed. That is why Abhaya Charanaravinda one who takes shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna, those feet, they bestow actual fearlessness. So tomorrow, most probably we'll go to Croatia program. So we'll see if about Skype, most probably not tomorrow, then on Monday. I will put in chat.